You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. You don't play to just play it. That's the great thing about sports. You play to win. And I don't care if you don't have any wins. You go play to win. When you start telling me it doesn't matter, then retire. Get out. Because it matters. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Shout out to Ron Oliver. Cowboys music. That chill beat. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, I am savoring this morning. Our Monday morning hangover. Oh, my goodness. You know how mm, the coffee just has that better aroma. The air feels crisper Mm, after a Dallas Cowboy win. Good morning, good people, and Eagle and 49er fans. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo who got into the sauce a little bit too much last night, as well as Joe Bear in the house. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. So let's get open for business here, and let's wake up the football gods. Cowboys got a big scare last night. Jake Ferguson, he will be having uh, an MRI this morning. Uh, and Thanks to find out the extent of the damage. Dak Prescott talked to him last night and said he was in good spirits. He left the uh, and got on the bus without help, without crutches, without a cane, without a brace, without a walking boot, just an ace wrap and some ice. And so... The the hope is that he just hyperextended the knee, kind of like what happened to Zeke a couple of years ago. He ended up missing one game with the hyperextended knee, and so hopefully, knock on wood, the Cowboys d- d- dodge disaster. What a game! What a game! What a game! Before I get into everything else, um, Mike McCarthy, Mike Zimmer, the Mike and Mike Show. Um, I want to because this was the first game of the season that we have gone through without Rashid, and especially as ugly as that game was. I just want to remember, I want people to remember, I know a lot of you, Rashid was like a pit bull when he was always talking about Dak Prescott was a dink and dunker or garbage time quarterback and stuff, but Rashid was a really special person and was a great friend, and he's definitely missed. And in honor of him and the New York Giants. What? Why do we get a wide receiver? Why do we get a wide receiver? Why do we get a wide receiver? Shout out to all those who are no longer with us. So, before I get into the whole game, and there's so many positives about this game, that it is comical to me. It is literally comical to me because I've been on the Dan Celia show. I don't know what happened. You know, I did have to take my dad to the doctor, uh, you know, two weeks ago, and I let him know I couldn't be on that day. I didn't get the link and stuff for this week, you know, I, and, I, and I don't know why. So I don't know if he's dropped me from the show and things, but we'll see. But you know, listening to Dan Salio, he says that the Cowboys are a five-win team. They're terrible. They're terrible. You had guys like Daniel Lousy who were literally saying, there's question marks with the offensive line. They're going to be starting two rookie offensive linemen. And and then, of course, you got, you know, you, who's the number two wide receiver? Who's the number two wide receiver, right? 
You know, they got questions at linebacker. They got questions at defensive line. You got a new defensive coordinator. You got Mike McCarthy who fell off the salad truck. We got all of those things. And what I noticed last night as the game, the Cowboys were, were in control of it throughout the whole game, that I got a lot of people that were here, not, not just haters and trolls from other teams, but even people on the Cowboys side that, you know, well, this game didn't impress me. This was nothing. Or, or the Browns, they're a terrible team. They're awful. Now, I want to remind you that the Eagles, the Cowboys, the Browns, the Miami Dolphins were all teams that were in the playoffs in the first round. So these were teams that were in the playoffs last year. So as we go through and say, this team sucks, I want to go back five days ago, just five days ago, and let's listen to this. And they're playing the Browns. So all this is a very big story for the offseason. How much it will impact the regular season is the question. Well, there's at least one person who thinks it's going to work out great. After Dak Prescott finished second in MVP voting last year, one NFL executive told our Jeremy Fowler of Dak, he thinks, quote, I think he's going to have his bleep you season. Mm. Shut everybody up and win an MVP. You buy it? Well, it's going to be real tough to start that, that um, bleep you season <laughs> across from Miles Garrett. Right. Who is going to be saying bleep you to anybody who you try to put in front of him. So that's a tough way to start. But I do think, I mean, Dak obviously has the ability to do that. Last year he showed that he could do something like that. But this new offensive line, that's where the question marks are. Absolutely. It's not going to be a problem just against people like Miles Garrett. I think it's going to be a problem all year long. It's nice to have CD. You throw him a For quick sure. pass and he'll get you 35 yards every now and then. But this is not going to be the easiest season that Dak Prescott has yeah. ever had. Who, who, whoever said that, first of all, there's only one person who is going scorched earth, and that's on Jerry and Steve, or two people, Jerry and Steven, because everybody else thinks he should be paid yeah. again and get it done. But after that, couple concerns. You got a rookie starting left tackle, right? He's quite but I think he's going to play against Miles Garrett. That that brings me concern. Tyler Guyton is yeah, his Guyton. name. Yeah. So, so we're a little concerned about that. Let's also talk about the running backs, right? Like mm -hmm. they, they are they are older as being kind. No, no. They have the best running back room in the league in 2018. <laughs> that's what they have. <laughs> they have Zeke Elliott and they have Dalvin Cook. Okay, so that's a concern for me because if you're going to take pressure off of Dak, it's through the run game. Right. And now it's like you're putting more pressure on Dak, asking him, thank God they got CD's deal done because it, it is a major – and and again, you're putting all the pressure on him to go make these plays. The guy's played well. Like, I, whatever – people say whatever they want, playoffs, I get it, all that. But the guy's a good quarterback. He's, he gives you chances to win each and every week. I just don't understand it. I, I, I'm just going to sip this. This is your game, right? Yeah. Oh. Kmart will be in Cleveland with, uh, with uh, Tom Brady. I'm not sure if word has reached oh, you, but Brady you. is doing – that game. I'm going to definitely watch because of Tom Brady. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, for those of you, this is an inside joke. Jeff was so put off yesterday yes. that I mentioned that it was Brady's first game just as being one of the factors in the game. Not that it's going to Im impact the <laughs> outcome. Still get it. It, still just, it, get just, it. it just raises the magnitude. Of the game. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I guess I guess we've watched yeah. watched yeah. enough of that. So before I hear everybody say. They're just a bad team. They suck. Cowboys beat nobody. They're just a tomato can. That's the case. Whenever the Cowboys beat somebody, they suck. But you know what? <clears throat> you can say it all you want. But I'm going to look at this and say, you know, for the Dallas Cowboys, who played no starters other than their rookies, uh, offensive linemen, Tyler Guyton and Cooper Beebe, they didn't play any starters. Now, again, this is just one game. One game in the month of September. I will say this over and over again. Don't get too excited by what you see in September or too upset. Because this is the feeling out process that goes on. The Green Bay Packers last year sucked the first half of the season, got it together and go on the second half. The Eagles were winning like crazy the first 10 weeks of the season and then sucked on the way out. So you don't know. It is a marathon. But things that they said about the Dallas Cowboys, hmm, well, they didn't come to fruition. What I will say is, let's just take some of the things. 
Zeke Elliott, he's old, washed up, so on. He had 10 carries, 40 yards, 4-yard average. Hmm. Five yards uh, more average than when he was in New England last year. Picked up short yards plays because that brought those numbers down. Ended up getting a touchdown. Seeming to have a burst like we haven't seen in a while. Rico, uh, eight carries, 26 yards, 3.2 yard average. Uh, Doable. Doable. You kind of think that those numbers would have been reversed. C.D. Lamb, he got his money, and they used him in the running game. Stephen Jones said he wants him to have 12 to 15 touches a game. Well, he had three running the football, picked up 25 yards, 8.3-yard average. And mind you, he just got here two weeks ago, and so much for the soft tissue injury that they kept trying to speak into existence, ESPN. Brandon Cooks got one carry for five yards. Deuce Vaughn, one carry for four yards. Dak had one carry, three yards. What you're looking at is truly running back by committee. And what I always tell you guys is Mike McCarthy is not the big, we're going to pound, we're going to pound, we're going to pound type of coach. It's like being a husband and taking out the trash. I don't know anybody that says, oh my God, we're going to take out the trash. Let's go take the trash. We're going to go out to the trash can. Yay. No, we take out the trash can because we got to take the trash out. Because we have a wife, okay? You, you, <laughs> when she said, can you take out the trash? Don't wait. Just get, just get up right then and there. Take it out. Don't wait. Don't wait. But that's Mike McCarthy in the running game. It wasn't particularly beautiful, but you got 103 yards running the football against one of the best front sevens in football. One of the best defenses in football. At least going into this game, they were. And then, here's where people will say, well, shit, CeeDee Lamb only got 61 yards. Well, he did just get here two weeks ago. But understand, CeeDee Lamb having 1,700 yards is great for fantasy football, but might not necessarily be the best thing when it comes to crunch time. Because if you're relying solely on CeeDee Lamb and he has a bad game, then you're screwed. Here's what you really want to have. And I don't have the statistic in front of me, but it's something like when Dak Prescott hit six different receivers, it's kind of like when Emmitt Smith rushed for 100 yards. When the Cowboys with Emmitt Smith would rush for 100 yards, they were butter. They were winning all the time, all the damn time, okay? And that's how it is when the Cowboys hit six or more receivers with Dak Prescott. He hit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight different people caught a ball from Dak Prescott yesterday. And it should have been nine because Turpin literally on his nine, literally, I'm telling you, the football touched the circle in the nine and he dropped it. Dak Prescott, that first half was, I mean, it was. We did have some pass breakups. You had guys that were draped all over. It wasn't that guys were wide the hell open. They were contested. They were a good defense. So people say, well, he was only 179 yards, one TD, and no turnovers. For the first game, live action that they've had since last year, I'll take that. But here's what's great, because by hitting all of these different guys and Dak Prescott being accurate as he was, as a defensive coordinator, C.D. Lamb's got five catches. That's the, okay. Well, look, if we shut down C.D., we keep him having a monster day. Okay. Well, Brandon Cooks gets four catches for 40 yards. Then you even got Hunter Lipke, who got two catches for 18 yards. And you got Jalen Brooks, who got one catch for 18 yards. You got Jake Ferguson, I hope he's okay, who gets three catches for 15 yards. You got Zeke, got two catches for nine yards. You gave him Rico, get a catch for five yards. So... It's keeping the defense with their head on a swivel that they don't know where's it coming from. Where's it coming? Oh, oh, you want to take CD? Okay, we'll go to Brandon Cooks. You want to try and take CD and Brandon Cooks? Then we'll go to Hunter Lipke and on the outside or Jake Ferguson. 
that's what you want because you can't concentrate on one player. You are spreading the field out. And that's what this whole philosophy of this Texas Coast offense is about. Being where they're not. Not trying to throw in a double coverage all the time and force it to CeeDee Lamb. And it behooves you to be able to have guys that can make plays all over the field. And the thing that I will say that was great, you guys may remember the infamous Chaz Green game. I hate to hate on Chaz Green because it's not as much Chaz Green's fault as it was the play calling and the coaching. The Cowboys recognize you have the defensive MVP over there going against a rookie playing his very first game. And instead of putting him on an island and saying, he's yours, you know, do the best you can, and you end up giving up nine sacks on your quarterback, they helped him. They helped him. They made sure that that was not going to be what killed us. And this is the benefit of those who say, you know, Zeke Elliott, well, you know, the Cowboys got the best, you know, rushing tandem since 19, I mean, since 2019. Okay, whatever. The thing that people won't take into account is how good Zeke is at blocking. He had two great blocks in there that saved Dak Prescott's, the $240 million man. And um, that was amazing. So if you think about last year, where the Cowboys' offense started out, which was bad. It was bad. I'm not going to say that this was, oh, my God, the greatest performance on the, uh, and anything. No. But this is a road game. This is a road game in September. You win 33-17, and it wasn't even that close. On the defensive side, oh, my goodness. Whew. Just imagine if Eric Kendricks had not turned down the deal from San Francisco for more money. As much as we kill Cap Boy and the Dallas Cowboys for not making major moves, you got to say that Eric Kendricks paid off so thus far. He'd earned his check for the season yesterday alone. Six tackles, three assists, two sacks, and an interception, and I think a partridge in a pear tree. I got a pear tree. I didn't see a partridge in it, though. But, but be that as it may. Overshown. Agent Zero, dude, is unbelievable. Unbelievable. When he was out there, <coughs> excuse me, you thought Micah Parsons was going to go ahead and get to Sean Watson. You've seen Micah Parsons being the fastest guy out on the field. Not anymore. Not anymore. Overshown A took the right angle, okay, and ended up hitting him at the point of attack. And by that, I mean, if you've ever been skeet shooting, you're not aiming at the target. You're aiming at where the target's going to be. And see, that was one of those things that when we had that 1990s defense, you would see guys going this banana route to get to a player. The closest point is a straight line at the mesh point and you see overshone shot out of a cannon going to right where Deshaun Watts is going to be and lay in the wood the physicality of this team this is where you wonder Micah Parsons of course with Dan Quinn that Dan Quinn's my buddy and like my uncle and everything else that's great you got your uncle and stuff that you're hanging out with okay but you know what I need Somebody put a foot in your ass and to motivate you guys and take you to another level. And maybe, just maybe, Dan Quinn was the right coach at the right time to take a completely demoralized defense from 2020 and get him pointed in the right direction. And now handing it off to Mike Zimmer is the guy that could take him through to another level. I haven't seen the Cowboys defense play like that in a long time, people. They were physical. They were at... The the point of attack, attacking, and they didn't give up Jack. Um, it was unbelievable. So when you think about what they did to Deshaun Watson, I think it was it five sacks, six sacks. 
six sacks on Deshaun Watson. On third down, they were two of 15. Fourth down, they were three of five. Their yards per play was 3.3 yards a play, and they only gave up 137 yards in the air and 93 on the ground. And most of that was given up in the second half in garbage time. I believe they had 53 yards of passing in the second half. So from my standpoint, I'm going to say for all the haters out there, no problem. If this is the first game of the season and a game we can build on, I'm okay with that. So as we get ready to roll, we got all kinds of stuff. There's so much stuff to break down through here. Cooper BB was looking really good at center. Night and day difference. Tyler Guyton for his first experience going against the best in the business. Did a great job. The offensive line in general, they gave up three sacks to one of the best fronts in football. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Um, But the Cowboys... They did what they were supposed to do. And for a team that lost five games on the road, getting a season opener that wasn't against the Giants on the road, I'm okay with. Let's see what the haters have to say now. We, we heard what they said five days ago that, of course, the Cowboys were going to be ass-ass. Let's see what they say today. I bet it's going to be, well, Cleveland's a bad team. They're just a bad team. To me. Um, right now, it's about... Celebrating this win tonight, um, hell of a win with these guys. Excited for this plane ride back with them. Uh, but turning the page tomorrow, getting on to, to, to the, the Saints and uh, taking it one game at a time. But, but that's, the, that, that's what is at the forefront of my mind, um, not the money. It's about holding up my end of the deal, and that's winning. And, and I want to do it here. What it means is a big commitment uh, to the next five years, to our future, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of me that thinks... Uh, uh, I'd hope Dak is our quarterback for the rest of my time. Okay, so, I mean, good for, the rest for him. Of his time. For all the talk we've had about Dak and his contract and everything else, he got his money good for him. If you know our show, you know we are going to talk about the Cowboys, and I <laughs> promise we will get to them in a moment. But watching that game yesterday, it didn't feel as much about them as it felt about one other storyline. What did you put on Twitter yesterday that got everyone talking? Yeah, quarterback's a problem in Cleveland. And if I was Kevin Stefanski, I would be thinking long and hard about Jameis Winston and moving him to be my starting quarterback. They can't run anything in Cleveland. One, Kevin Stefanski, the beauty of this offense is that play-action pass, Kyle Shanahan, Matt LaFleur, Gary Kubiak offense. Can't run it with Deshaun because Deshaun isn't – ready to operate the play-action pass. He doesn't see the field well. He's not throwing in rhythm and timing. He's missing receivers by six, seven yards, not feet. I mean, okay, so third down, he's going to climb the pocket. Right now, you have Amari Cooper working in the middle of the field. He's the guy to throw the football to. As you make that, you throw the ball open now. But there's that holding of the football because there's a lack of confidence. You have Elijah Moore running this little in or slant. This is wide open in the NFL. For 60 plus million dollars, hit your back foot. There's no pressure here. Drive that football to his chest. Instead, it's grounded because it looks like he's trying to guide the football. Amari Cooper running a slant. You're going to get pressure. Mm-hmm. If he hits this, Amari Cooper might get 15, 20 yards. If. Put it on his chest. Instead, mm. instead he's missing him by a yard. So Down again, the red zone. This is going to be at the bottom of the screen. Just throw that. That's an easy decision. Watch where he throws this football in second and ten in the red zone. Oh. That ball's six or seven yards out of bounds. That's just a total waste of a play. Um, there's no rhythm. There's no scheme. When he calls the play action, it's not ep- executed. We're not seeing the field, and there's hmm. egregious misses. It's mm-hmm. a problem. Rex, what was the first thing you said to me when I asked you about this game today? I go, that's what you put out there? You have all off season, sure. you have all training camp, and that's what you put out there? Like, they got out coached too. Like, uh, the quarterback... Okay, play like like garbage. Well, that that plan was horrible. And first off, you can't let Micah Parsons destroy the game. Part of the reason Deshaun Watson looked as bad as he did because they couldn't. Yeah, I don't want to be naive. Parsons. The offensive line did not play well, no doubt. But here's my here's my thing, Rex. I don't think this offense. You know this offense, right? This this West Coast run play action scheme when it's at its best. They won't do that or can't do that with Deshaun. It's only shotgun. When they try to do it sometimes, Deshaun's launching it into double coverage. So I agree with, like, the plan may not be ideal, but I don't think...
So the guy used to be a hell of a player. I, we've, we've seen him one time, one time since he went to Cleveland where he looked like the old Deshaun Watson. Right. And that was when he hit 13 straight passes with a shoulder injury the to beat Baltimore. Yep. Like, and that's it. So to me, the confidence, you talked about it before. Kid is playing with zero confidence. Zero confidence. Who the hell's that on? Just the kid? Bull. Bull. It's on the coach as well. Bull. I'm telling here, you here, right here. now. I can tell you right now. There's ways of, of, of doing things when your quarterback's in a funk. And by the way, when you got, when you got uh, two backup tackles in, how'd the Rams look last night with three backup offensive linemen? They had a plan. That's a difference. The coach and the, and the quarterback were connected. Right now, I don't see anybody connected. Just I'll stop right there. So it's not about what the Cowboys did. It's not about what the Cowboys did. It's about the the Browns. They're, oh, they're coaching. It was their their backup tackles. This is you know, what you. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Could it have been that the Cowboys out coached them, outplayed them, and were the better team? No, 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 no. The Cowboys will never get any credit, but that's okay. I hope that the Cowboys don't like last year get a big head. That they stay hungry, they stay ready to fight, that they do their shit. All right, good people. It is definitely a wonderful, wonderful day here. And um, I got a lot. It's going to be busy today. Don't forget, we'll be live streaming tonight. Tonight, we'll be live streaming the 40 Winers game against the Jets. We'll see which one is the, you know, are the Jets the Super Bowl contender that they're talking about? Are the San Francisco 49ers, are they going to come through and just blow the doors out? We'll find out tonight. And um, I appreciate each and every one of you guys for being here and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. We are out.